Hello friends, it's NintendoGen64 here, and today we're going to be doing Banzai Bonsai in Let's Play Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. And um, for those misogynists out there, uh, please tune away from this video immediately because in this part we are playing as Coco, and we're not actually in fact playing as Crash, which is um, quite cool to see us, uh, you know, actually in a 3D environment playing as Coco because we've never done that before. That's, that's a unique thing to this game because Obviously, you do play as Coco in Crash Bandicoot 3 in the uh, the Tiger levels and like the plane level, and then you play as her in Engine. But you don't actually play as Coco. You just play as whatever vehicle she's on. This is the first time you actually get to play as Coco herself, and um, I would be lying if I said it was uh, a highlight of the game or anything like that because it definitely uh, playing as Coco is a massive step down from playing as Crash. And already in this game, Crash is like a lot worse to play as as he was uh, than he was in the original Crash Bandicoot game uh, games uh, I should say plural um, the reason is she feels a lot clunkier she doesn't feel as um, like look at her descension timeline her ascension time she takes ages to get to her peak and she falls quickly um, she does have this neat little karate kick thing here she's got this low kick as well and she's got this like stomp attack which uh, I guess is the equivalent of Crash's ground pound but she doesn't do any of like Crash's techniques like, you know, tiptoe or double jump or run or anything. So um, I will be getting the relic uh, in this part as well. Um, since there's no, like I say, there's no real reason to not get the relic since we will... Uh, I mean, we will have to come back to this level because there is a red gem path in this level. Which I forget what it's for. I, I, I didn't actually check on the, in the... I probably should have checked on the warp room to see if you actually needed... Um, uh, to wait until you get the red gem before you get the box gem in this level. I can't exactly remember which order you, it comes in, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but overall, let's talk about Banzai Bonsai here for a second. This is a really nice level. The music is fantastic, um, the lighting is great, and just overall it's a very nice thematic level. Like, it, it, it works well uh, exploiting the tropes of, like, the Orient, I guess, and especially Asia and that kind of stuff. I mean, Asia is in the Orient, or the Orient is Asia. I don't know, they're interchangeable terms. What do you want from me? Um, you know, so, like, it looks really nice. Uh, the color scheme is great. The color palette is great. Very, like, um, vibrant. That's a lot, of, a lot of levels in this game have really vibrant color palettes. And aren't just like so that's that's one of my problems with Crash Bandicoot 3 is that the color palette. I just think of when I think of that game, I just think of oranges. Like there's a lot of oranges in Crash 3. Think of the motorbike levels. Think of the Egyptian levels. You know, the only level that really stands out to me in that game is like the nighttime Arabic level. And even those levels are kind of like you know overly purple, like not very subtle with their color scheme. Um, but yeah, this level has a very vibrant and um. Okay, that's going to be a bit tricky to do that, whatever. Yeah, very vibrant and diverse color palette, which I think adds incredibly well to the artistic design of this game. And I'm not I'm not doing a, a review or anything, I'm just talking about, like, what I see. And what I see is actually a really nicely designed game with a lot of uh, stuff to look at. Maybe it's distracting? Maybe? I don't know. I will say this, the colors are a lot brighter and more unrealistic than something like Crash Bandicoot 2, which had, I reckon, arguably just as a of variety, has just as much variety in its color scheme, and um, also managed to pull off more of a realistic look, I suppose, if you want to go that direction. Whatever. The thing I really do like about this level as well is that um, if you've been paying attention to, you know, your surroundings, you'll notice that it does use pretty much every single uh, trope in existence that refers to um, Asia and, you know, China and Japanese and stuff. It's hard to put a finger on what level, what country this level is supposed to be set in, because it does borrow a lot from um, a bunch of other countries. Like, it's not just... I don't think it's localized to one country that they're parodying, I guess, or using. Um, anyway, you can see there in the background, there's an unexploded nitro crate. Now, I'm pretty sure that's from the red gem path. It's either the red gem path or the bonus round. I don't think it's the bonus round, though, because I don't think there was a uh, one in that location, uh, a nitro crate in that location in the bonus round. And there's a checkpoint. See, now look at this. We've gone from some kind of like, um, you know, little, uh, ah, shit, I need to commit suicide now. Like a little pool area, uh, a garden, I guess, or something, to like the rooftops. 
you know, we're just going all over the place in this level. Really cool level. Probably in my top 10 levels in this game. Like, I, I do have a few levels which I prefer over this. Like, I don't know if I like this level more than Compactor Reactor. But that is a gorgeous moon-looking thing there. And that crystal looks really nice. I'm going to grab it. Um, I think you have to destroy the... Yeah, 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 here's what you do. Destroy that. That'll destroy all the nitro crates. And then come over here and destroy that. Get yourself a Coco 1-Up. Yeah, that's right, the one-ups have Coco. And look at that, there's another baffling scenario, because we've got Cortex, uh, with his head on, like, a, a Buddha kind of thing. And we've got two, like, Anubis-looking dogs that look like they're from Egypt or something. Whatever, very nice level. Um, Crash, uh, for those misogynistic fans who tuned out at the start, you can tune back in now, because Crash Bandicoot just knocked Coco. Um, okay, so, 1 minute 30. We'll see how we go with this. This level is actually a bit tricky. I'm not going to lie, it's it's, it's actually kind of hard. Particularly because you're playing as Coco and you don't get the slide and the spin and that kind of stuff. But I mean, uh, she does have her own equivalent, like, kick thing, so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, whatever, we're doing the time trial now. Ooh, ooh, did you see that? There was a hidden three crate there. Yeah, so, this time trial, I don't know how hard it'll be. I haven't actually done it in many, many years, so we'll see. Oh, oh, no, you can't make that. Can you? Maybe you can. I don't know. It looks like you can. I bet you it looks like you can, but you really can't. And look at that. We have 50 lives already. That's pretty staggering. Now, I don't know, but for some reason, like, anything that doesn't involve crash platforming is much harder to get the time trial on for some reason. Like, I find that just any level that is, like, not, you know, normal, like this level, where you're playing as Coco platforming. Yes, it's still a platformer, but you're not playing as Crash, so immediately it's much more annoying and difficult. And, uh, like the vehicle, like that 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 one we did the other part, like last part, what's it called? What was that level? I don't know. So, yeah, Seashell Shenanigans, yes. That one, that one was pretty tricky to get the time trial on. Bamboozled wasn't so bad, I guess, and all the, neither was Tornado Alley. But this, ah, shit, look at that, yeah. This level is proving to be quite annoying so far. I've already died like three times, but, and it's only been like the first segment of the level. Maybe there's like something to like, I ignoring the time crates or something. Like maybe some of them are just like, not worth getting. Like, particularly the one crates, I don't know. I don't know if there's any like, strategy on which time crates you should get and which you should okay I'm just gonna stop doing that okay I'm just gonna quit that you can see me fail it a bunch of times I'm just gonna stop that okay let's try this again I'm going to get it this time I believe in myself and when you believe in yourself you can accomplish anything as they say so if I can't accomplish this then uh, that catchphrase is wrong because I do believe in myself okay look at this this takes up so much time if you're not supposed to do it like that Okay, alright. I don't know if that was what I should have been doing, but whatever. Okay. Two crate. Thank you. Alright. Watch out for that fish there. Uh, and there's an Echo Echo. Oh, there's a time crate in that. They do that a lot, actually. Like, they hide the time crates behind other crates. I don't think they'd be so dickish as to, like, hide a time crate behind, like, a nitro or something. Like, three nitros. Well, maybe they would. That'd be kind of interesting if you, like, got to the end of the level, hit the destroy nitro crate, and then you got, like, ten seconds time frozen or something. I don't think it'd be very useful at all, actually. Hmm. I don't know. Something about this game reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets, like, turned into, like, 3D or something. Remember that one? The, uh, the, the Halloween episode? I think it's called Homer Cubed or something. Yeah, that one. I don't know. The whole game just like looks like that. Yeah, random observation, I know, but you know, it does. Ah, shit. That's not going to bode well for my time trial hopes. Or my time trial dreams. Actually, did you see that one crate there? Wasn't that originally like a... A, um... A something crate, like a nitro? I don't even know what the challenge of that is. I mean, if they wanted you to like think getting that three crate was difficult or something, then they probably should have not turned that other nitro into a one crate. Yeah. Okay. It probably annoys people that I keep, like, talking about, like, things in depth that happened, like, three seconds ago or something. Okay. 
Because like I, what I, what I tend to do is when I play the level, like I I take I like observe everything, and then like I comment on something that I did like three seconds ago, afterwards for like 15 seconds or something, and by that point like that thing that I'm commenting on happened like 20 seconds ago. Yeah, I don't know. Ah oh, shit, I'm not gonna get this. And I believed in myself too. Look at that. Okay. Well, unless there's like a whole hell of time freezy crates, because. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna even like sacrifice my. Akuakus at this point. Okay. Okay. Alright. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Ha ha ha. Okay. A. What's the R? R. D. Okay. Thank God you don't need to get gold, because I am way off getting gold at this point. Okay, well that was a mammoth task, but we finally did uh, Banzai Bonsai. And there's our relic. We have to come back, obviously. Well, who's going to get one minute on that level, I ask you? Alright, in the next part, we're going to do a level I absolutely despise. And get an... Oh my... What is up with this? Why are there three levels in this warp room that you exclusively play as, not as Crash. I don't know, but in the next part we're going to be doing that sinking feeling, and i got to tell you, I've got a sinking feeling about that part. Haha. <laughs> Alright, see you then. Bye.